history of human settlements in India goes back to 5000 years. Archaeological remains from that period have proved the existence of Indus Valley civilization in the Indian subcontinent. At Mehergad in Baluchistan, artifacts dating 2000 years older than the Indus Valley civilization have been found. However, no sign of civilization has been found from any period predating this find. So it is believed that humans began to lead a settled agrarian life in the Indian subcontinent 7000 years ago. Writers like Graham Hancock and Eric von Daniken have speculated about even older civilizations. However, in the absence of scientific proof, their theories have remained fantasies. But what if instead of accepting these theories as scientific facts, they are used as basis for imagination? Today, in the 85th episode of Granthayatra, we are going to explore an interesting novel based on the concept of an ultra-ancient civilization. The title of this novel is Vaman Parat Na Ala. Vaman did not return. And the writer of this book is the well-known scientist Jayant Narayikar. Jayant Vishnu Narayikar was born in 1938 at Kolhapur. His father, Wrangler Vishnu Vasudev Narayikar, was a famous mathematician and the head of the mathematics department of Banaras Hindu University. His mother, Sumati Narayikar, was an expert in Sanskrit. Jayant Narayikar completed his schooling in Varanasi. He topped his class of BSc and received his master's degree and PhD from the Cambridge University. Subsequently, he was engaged in research on gravitational force along with the well-known scientist Fred Hoyle. After returning to India in 1972, Narayikar headed the astrophysics department of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and later he became the director of Ayuka in Pune. Dr. Narayikar is well known as a scientist, but he also made a valuable contribution to Marathi literature. He was instrumental in generating interest in science fiction in Marathi. He wrote numerous stories and articles to explain astronomy for the common man. Books of his science fiction and popular scientific writings such as Jinn in the Space, Prophet, Virus, Sanctuary, Gift of Angels, Magic of the Time Machine and This is Life were published. His novel, Vaman Did Not Return, was published in 1986. At the beginning of the novel, readers are introduced to Arul, a scientist. He is engaged in experiments related to gravitational force at a place close to the town of Gauri Bidnur in Karnataka. He has commissioned digging of a deep pit to place his scientific equipment there as part of his research. One day, the diggers unexpectedly come across a metal case at the depth of 100 feet. This leads to a great deal of excitement as no archaeological remains corresponding to any known civilization have ever been found at this depth. In addition, the metal container is found to be covered with writing in some unknown script and strange figures. When Arul visits the excavation site to see the box for himself, project manager Raghavan updates him with more baffling information. Look at this conversation. This whole thing looks pretty strange, Arul. Strange? In what way? Arul asked with surprise. This container doesn't seem to have a lid. In addition, it is covered in strange letters and figures. An archaeologist is summoned to interpret those figures. The news of the container gets published in newspapers. Authorities in New Delhi are informed and at the behest of the Prime Minister himself, a committee is appointed to solve the mystery of the strange container. Arul, computer expert Lakshmanan, archaeologist Naveen, intelligence officer Samant and a few high-level officials are appointed as members of the committee. Narayikar effectively portrays these characters. Arul, who is immersed in his research, has a mature personality whereas highly intellectual Lakshmanan is a little impatient in nature. Lakshmanan's wife Urmila, Naveen who is clean for all appearances but who actually uses his position as a well-known archaeologist to help smugglers. A dedicated and capable officer Samant make the narrative come alive. 
When reading this novel, readers realize how we take our life made comfortable by recent scientific innovations for granted. When this novel was written, mobile phones, laptops, robots with superhuman capabilities working in specific niche sectors such as surgery were not commonly available. There were not too many commercial airlines or a network of flight routes and airports. Flight tickets were not booked on online portals but by calling the airline offices. Today's readers may also find the cliched portrayal of the lone female character in this novel somewhat strange. However, all this provides us with a glimpse of life in the decades of 1970s and 80s. Narrator uses the technique of a thriller to take his narrative forward. Every chapter in this story is crisp and ends at a revelation or a turning point in the story. The action takes place simultaneously across the globe. While one incident takes place at Gauri Bidnur in Karnataka, the next chapter begins in New Delhi. As soon as it ends, the action shifts to California in the US. This helps to keep the reader's interest alive. Let us look at one sample paragraph. British Airways jumbo jet that took off from London landed at the Sahar airport at 20 minutes past 3 in the morning. When Carl Schulz finally emerged from the terminal building after proceeding through slow-moving queues of immigration and customs, it was 15 minutes to 5. The Indian who was speaking was 5 feet 5 inches, but he was dwarfed by Carl's robust physique. Through lines such as these, Narikar succeeds in creating an effective background atmosphere. Arul manages to interpret the figures on the container and opens the chest. Lakshmanan prepares a report based on the information found in the container. But then, Arul and Lakshmanan are faced with another difficulty. They are informed by Inspector Samant that archaeologist Naveen is a criminal who is helping an international gang to smuggle antique objects out of India. He orders Arul and Lakshmanan not to divulge any information obtained from the container to Naveen. However, by then, Naveen has had enough time to study the container and he places his conclusions before the committee. He informs them that the container was buried by an advanced civilization that flourished on earth 20,000 years ago. But the more astonishing information obtained from the container relates to detailed instructions for creating an advanced computer and developing a von Neumann machine with its aid. When explaining the concept of a von Neumann machine, Lakshmanan says, You are all familiar with the name of the mathematician John von Neumann. This extraordinarily intelligent person had postulated several invaluable theses on the nascent topics of computer and artificial intelligence. Towards the end of his life, he introduced the concept of a machine that would be capable of thinking and of producing a replica of itself. These android robots would have such a vast capacity for work that their existence would prove to be a boon for our industrial and technological development. Lakshmanan succeeds in creating an advanced computer based on the information obtained from the container. He names this computer as Brihaspati. He also creates an android robo with the help of this computer and names him Vaman. At the same time, the archaeologist Naveen is trying to obtain the information that would help in creating the robo. He is under pressure from a network of international criminals who want to sell this information to a foreign company for huge profits. By and by, Lakshmanan grants the power of independent thinking to Vaman. In a few days after that, Vaman imbibes all the knowledge that is available to humans. He then begins to think independently. On reaching this stage of evolution, Vaman describes himself in the following words. Previously, when I was a lifeless entity, I was using the information stored in my brain as per your instructions. Now, I am self-aware of the existence of that information. Initially, I was startled by that revelation, but now I am getting used to it. I realize that although this information is vast, it is incomplete. I run to Brihaspati to make it complete. 
and this is where the novel takes a thrilling turn. To tell us more about the characteristics of this novel and its place in Marathi literature, we have with us today the well-known nuclear scientist and famous science fiction writer Dr. Bal Phonke. Vaman Paratana Hala, Vaman Did Not Return, is the first science novel written by Jayant Narayanan. Although it is the first, I think it was path breaking, path breaking in the sense that it laid the foundation of modern Marathi science fiction. Science fiction till that time was written sporadically, but most of those stories. revolved around adventure or some kind of a fascination with space or speculative science of that kind for example a number of stories have been written around what happens in space or invasion from other uh, stars or other planets on earth robots or more used was the concept of time travel time travel is shown to be possible theoretically by the theory of relativity but it has not converted itself into reality nor will it become reality for quite some time a number of attempts have been made secondly if uh, time travel is possible then the question occurs is whether one goes only into the future or one can come in from the future into past or go into the past and then effects of that kind what woman did not return did was to establish modern established science into fiction did not rely only on speculative fiction but what was proved and what was possible the only question was how far does does one progress it forward how much does it how much does one extrapolate it to bring it into some kind of reality second most important aspect of this particular novel is characterization it does not depend only on science related issues or only on technical related issues it depends more on the impact of this science concept on uh, human life especially human emotional life and that's why characterization is most important to so characterization of dramatis personae especially their emotional appeals is most important and that has been portrayed in ample measure in this particular novel and that's why i'm firmly convinced that it is a path breaking novel and has established jan narikar as leader of modern science of marathi science fiction for all time to come Do Naveen and his accomplices succeed in accessing the secret scientific information stored in the container? Does humanity benefit from the enhancement in Vaman's intelligence and his ability to think? Does the fear expressed by Lakshmanan's senior colleague Professor Kirtikar come true? Who kidnaps Lakshmanan's wife Urmila? Is Inspector Samant successful in his attempt to rescue her? To find answers to these questions you should read the novel Vaman did not return in the original the novel will certainly arouse your curiosity about other science fiction books written in marathi in the next episode of granthi yatra we shall explore a celebrated autobiography that portrays the horrific reality of indian society until then keep reading